Please don't skip ahead yet. Hi, this is your friendly neighborhood 80 slasher librarian, Josh LaRue. Just need a moment of your time. A lot of people don't know, but we're not able to monetize the channel here on YouTube due to the fact that the copyright holders of the books I narrate, the movies we riff, they get the ad revenue, and also being a partner on YouTube involves a lot of rules and censorship, and to do so would make it where a lot of the content, the audiobooks, the riffs, would have to be heavily censored or deleted completely. So we depend on amazing slashaholics like you to help fund the channel and keep it going and growing for years to come. And there's several fun ways to do that. You could join our Patreon right up there. And as a patron, you can join for as low as like $2, $5, $10 a month on up as high as you want and enjoy a lot of cool gifts like free ebooks, early access, exclusive content, even voicing characters and audiobooks here on the channel. You could also go to our PayPal and use the QR code right there and uh, you can donate directly to the channel. We see all donations and we appreciate all of them. If you don't want to use the QR code or don't know how, you can use our PayPal email address, which will be in the description below and the pinned comment, as well as our Cash App uh, donation username. And a fun way to help the channel is through our Cameo, right down there. Uh, on Cameo, you can ask for a birthday video, anniversary video. You can ask us to sing a song or something or ask us questions. And you can get a video from me, Alex, Sean, Master Evil, Mother Evil, the Rodeo Clown, any character from any show on the channel, or any character that I've voiced in the audiobooks. It's a fun way to help the channel. It's only $10 a video, and we'll have a lot of fun doing that. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy tonight's content. Be excellent to each other. Please consider helping the channel. And always remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Thank you. Child's Play, a fan novelization of the original movie written by Jeremy Terry. Chapter 3, Andy's New Friend. Karen walked by a sign declaring, Welcome to Sunnyside Elementary School in chipped white and red paint. She paused to take in the rusted chain-link fence that surrounded the playground, the cracked asphalt parking lot out front, and thought, Everybody is struggling these days. She passed through a gate onto the playground and saw Andy sitting against the fence, pulling blades of grass out of the dirt, alone with his thoughts. Just you wait, sweetheart. I think your day is about to get better. Karen looked left and saw Mrs. Waters, Andy's teacher, supervising recess. The younger lady noticed Karen and waved her over. Karen went and took a seat beside Mrs. Waters on a bench near a group of children playing a game of tag. Hello, Mrs. Waters. Andy had a bit of a rough morning before school today. How has he been? Mrs. Waters brushed a stray strand of yellow hair from her forehead and smiled over at Andy. He's been fine. I have to tell you, Miss Barclay, Andy is a delight to teach. He's so smart and polite, I wish all my students were like him. Karen sighed. Did he happen to mention anything about... His father? He didn't come right out and say anything, but I can tell when it's on his mind. He becomes more withdrawn like he is now if one of the other children talk about their fathers in front of him. Stepping away is his way of coping with the loss, I guess. Karen stared across at her son the little boy who'd had occasion to learn the hard truths of life far too soon, and had to bite back a sob. Oh, Andy. Mrs. Waters patted Karen's hand. Don't worry too much, Mrs. Barclay. It takes time to recover from the death of a parent, especially when the loss is so sudden. That's all that he needs, though, just some more time. Karen stood. Thank you. Andy isn't the only one who needs reassurance every now and then. You are very welcome. You and Andy have a great day. Karen crossed the playground to her son, and he looked up at her when her shadow fell across him. Hey, champ, are you ready to go home? Sure. He replied. He stood up and shouldered his backpack. Karen watched him walk from the playground to her battered old Ford with slumped shoulders. She needed to distract him from his unnatural brooding, remind him that he was a little boy. She sped up and bumped him playfully with her hip. How was your day? Okay. 
Do you have your new lunchbox? Did your classmates like it? Uh-huh. Billy's got one just like it. He spoke quietly, dragging his feet along the ground like a lifeless zombie. That's enough of this. It's time to light a fire under him. They came to her car and Andy climbed into the back seat. Karen leaned over to help him buckle his seatbelt and whispered into his ear. I may have something to go with that lunchbox and your tools you got this morning. Andy squinted up at her. What? You'll have to wait until we get home to find out, she said as she closed the car door. She laughed when she heard his muffled protest from the other side of the window. The elevator wasn't fast enough for Andy. Karen leaned against the corner and watched him bouncing up and down on his toes, begging the doors to open. Depression from moments ago a thing of the past. The old-fashioned dial above the door moved slowly from one to two and on. Karen glanced to the side, endlessly fascinated by the elevator's design. There were openings in the metal walls of the elevator car and shaft that allowed the occupant to look out at the staircase that wrapped around the shaft. They passed by Karen's neighbors, an elderly couple named Glenn and Brenda, who were making their way down the stairwell. She waved and they waved back. The dial reached four, the top floor of the apartment building. The ding of the elevator was like a pistol shot signaling the start of a race. The doors ground open and Andy was off in a flash. Karen followed him laughing again. Now this was more like it. It was good to be a parent. Their apartment was the last one down the right path from the elevator. Andy was already at the door, seeming to vibrate in his skin. He looked at the doorknob and then back to Karen. Come on, Mommy! Hurry up! I am, she said, shifting the large package from one hip to the other so she could reach into her purse and pull out her key ring. She paused for a split second as she always did when she held the keys in her hand. A simple silver keychain caught the hallway light, the initials B plus K engraved on the surface. I wish you could see him, Bob, she thought as she stuck the key in the lock and opened the door. You'd be so proud. Karen barely had time to pull the key back before Andy rushed by her into the apartment and shouted, We're home, Mom! I know, darling, she said as she shut and locked the door behind them. Andy held his hands out, his fingers grasping, as if saying, Gimme, gimme, oh, Mommy, please! Karen held the oblong present out to him, and Andy took it and ran into the living room. She walked behind him and watched as he tore the plain brown paper free to reveal the bright yellow box beneath. Andy's face lit up. He recognized the box. A good guy, doll, he said, turning the box around to look through the cellophane at the freckled face on the other side. I knew you'd get me one. Karen sat beside him on the couch and ruffled his hair. Happy birthday again. Thank you he said, pulling the doll from the box and setting it on his lap. Look at him, Mom! Well, isn't he something, she said. Show me how he works. Okay. He turned to face the doll and said, Hi, I'm Andy. What's your name? The doll's eyes blinked and then its head turned back and forth as if it were searching for the person speaking to it. It stopped facing Andy, and spoke. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> That's amazing! I love you, Mommy! Oh, I love you too, she said, as she wrapped him in her arms and gave him a big hug. Today turned out to be a pretty good day after all, she thought. A knock at the door. That'll be Aunt Maggie, Karen said, standing up and walking towards the hall. Play with Chucky, I'll be right back. Andy was too engrossed with his new friend to respond. 
Karen shrugged and stepped to the apartment door and opened it to find Maggie standing outside with the present under her arm. Hi, Mags, Karen said, taking the box from Maggie so she could shrug out of her heavy coat and scarf. Is this for Andy? Bingo, Maggie replied. Oh, you shouldn't have. Maggie reached out and took the present back from Karen. Nonsense, it's his birthday for Pete's sake. Besides, what else am I going to spend my money on? So how are things going with your red-headed stepchild? Karen raised an eyebrow. I'm sorry? Maggie pointed towards the sounds coming from the living room. How are things going with the doll? Did Andy like it? Karen opened her mouth to speak, but stopped when Andy raced into the hall with the doll clutched to his chest, yelling, Aunt Maggie, look what Mommy got me! Maggie leaned down to get a better look and smiled. Wow! He's almost as big as you, sport! That is some cool toy! Uh-huh. He talks and everything! Andy said, holding the doll up for her to see. Oh yeah? Show me! Andy turned the good guy so he could see its face. Go ahead. Say something to Aunt Maggie, Chucky. Chucky blinked his blue eyes and turned his head towards Maggie. Hi, he said in the voice that spoke of innocence and virtue. I like to be hugged. I'm sure you do, she said. She offered the box to Andy. Here you go. I got one more present for you. Andy's eyes lit up, and he wrapped his arms around her neck and gave her a sloppy kiss on the cheek. Thanks, Aunt Maggie. Maggie turned to Karen as Andy tore the paper from his new present. He's so sweet. Why can't all men be that nice? Karen shrugged. Maybe you've been picking the wrong ones? Oh, Mommy, look! Karen looked and saw Andy holding up a battery-operated AK-47. He pulled the trigger and automatic gunfire filled the apartment. Why did you have to get him a gun of all things? Karen asked, frowning down at her son. You know I don't like things like that. Maggie dismissed her complaint with a wave of her hand. He's a boy, Karen. Boys love to play with guns. Besides, it's a cold, cruel world out there, Karen. He'd better start learning how to defend himself. Right, Andy? Right. Frustrated, Karen glanced down at her watch and sighed. Oh no, it's almost 6.45. I better get going or I'm going to be late for work. She grabbed her coat from the rack by the door, put it on, and then turned back to Maggie. There's some leftover Irish stew and a salad in the refrigerator. You two can have it for dinner if you like. That sounds perfect, Maggie said. Don't worry about us. We're going to be just fine. You go and sell a bunch of jewelry so that pencil neck Criswell will lighten up. Karen laughed and gave her a quick hug. You got it. You're a great friend, you know. Oh, shucks, Maggie said in a bad southern accent. You're gonna make me blush. Karen knelt down and gave Andy a kiss on his forehead. I'm gonna miss you bunches, love. You be good for Aunt Maggie and do what she says. I'll be home as soon as I can. Hey, Andy said, holding up the doll. What about Chucky? Don't you want to kiss him goodbye, too? Sure, she said. She leaned closer and kissed the doll on the cheek. Goodbye, Chucky. The eyes blinked, seemed to follow her as she stood up. Hi, I like to be hugged. Weird, thought Karen. It really feels like it's talking to me. Karen looked at her watch again. Time was moving on while she was standing still. She threw them one quick wave and strode out of the apartment. Maggie locked the door behind her and then turned to Andy. So, are you ready for some dinner? Andy started to speak and paused when Chucky looked at him and asked, Hey, wanna play? Andy shouted sure and all thoughts of dinner were gone from his mind. He picked up Chucky and his gun and ran down the hall towards his bedroom door. Maggie watched him go wistfully and then walk towards the kitchen to warm up some stew.
Okay, Slashaholics, that was Chapter 3 of Child's Play, the fan novelization by Jeremy Terry. Sorry for the short upload tonight. I'll be back very soon with more chapters. I'm really excited about this book, guys, and I hope you are too. Um, things are getting eerie. Chucky's obviously, you know, getting the lay of the land of his new surroundings, and I can't wait to see how Jeremy handles uh, maybe in Chucky's head or Andy's as Andy's communicating with Chucky and Maggie's kind of seeing it from, you know, the peripheral and everything while, like, the news is on. I'm sure that's coming in the next chapter. I'm really curious to see how he's going to bounce back between the characters. Are we going to know what Chucky's thinking when he's watching the news about Charles Lee Ray dying and all that? Um, really excited about this book. And I love that the neighbors' names were Glenn and Brenda. I caught it there, Jeremy. I uh, see what you were doing there. Let me know what you guys thought of tonight's chapter. I'll be back very soon with more. Until then, this has been your friendly neighborhood 80 Slasher Librarian saying thanks for listening, be excellent to each other, and always remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. And of course, you can't keep a good guy down.